Um, okay. So thank so, Felicia and Leslie for being here with us today to talk to us about North Carolina's Career and College Promise. Please take it away. Hi, um, this is Felicia, and um, was, uh, we have been working on a presentation um, about career and college promise, which is one of the aspects of uh, the Triangle for Latino Students project. Um, and so we will be going into a general overview about it, but also how it coincides with um, the logic model as well as the timeline for the Triangle for Latino Students Success project. Um, so our first slide here just says kind of an overview of what three parts we'll be talking about. Um, we are really kind of wanted to have a focus on how Career and College Promise plays into the goals that have been set for the summer of 2013, which were, um, which were given in that nice logic model, um, as well as in the timeline um, that were presented, uh, that were a part of the um, IEP. Um, we also have a portion that will just go over uh, the three components of the career and college promise, and then a couple of other concerns, um, general questions that uh, we've discussed um, and that would be helpful. I'm not sure if it would be helpful to all of um, the implementation team, but also just to really get things thinking about how do we go forward from here now that um, uh, the, uh, we have the go-ahead to continue with the project. Um, so I just wanted to briefly go over the short-term goals um, that were in the logic model. So goal one is to have 20% um, of um, 60 to 80 middle school Latino students and their parents informed of the early college option um, and apply to early college. And then goal two, 25% um, of 45 to 50 Latino high school students informed of um, North Carolina Career and College Promise and with the hope that they will enroll in one college course. And then goal five, um, these aren't all the goals, um, simply because we really wanted to focus on um, how Career and College Promise played into the goals set forth for the summer of 2013. And some of the other goals um, are more so with uh, juntos or with other um, specific parts of, um, uh, of the group that don't necessarily have to do with Career and College Promise. Um, so goal five um, is to have 45 to 50 Latino high school students in Durham, Wake, and Johnson counties meet with the success coaches on a monthly basis. And then goal six, which is to have two student leaders on one college campus um, providing support for first-year college students. Um, so um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you all can kind of see more um, of the timeline here. This is the just the um, first portion of the timeline. Um, and uh, one of the concerns that we've already discussed with Elthea was um, on the timeline here, um, most of the components um, for North Carolina Career and College Promise are focused with early college. And some of the information we're providing next is more so that there are various aspects of the North Carolina Career and College Promise. and um, and this is great here, but we would really like to see this um, revised just to know um, who will be implementing certain parts of Career and College Promise um, and then what that looks like throughout the, um, throughout, over the years. Um, so this is just a general um, statement from Governor Beth Perdue. Um, so about um, Career and College Promise, so every student, no matter where he or she lives in North Carolina, must graduate from high school with what it really takes to succeed in a career in a two or four year college or in technical training. Um, so here is just more information. Um, so Career and College Promise is free to all students to maintain the speed average and meet certain requirements. Um, and the, the, the great thing about Career and College Promise is for the students, they're able to um, obtain some college credits um, during their high school, uh, during their high school career, which in the end um, makes it more affordable to even attend college afterwards, or they can transfer, um, or even obtain some kind of credential um, during this time. So this, for me, was kind of the best way for me to really visualize what exactly are the components of career and college promise. And so there's three aspects of this. Um, 
One being the first one that we're going to be discussing is cooperative innovative high schools. And for the longest time, these, are, these have been called early college, like high schools or early college high school programs. Um, and one thing that was a little bit confusing trying to go back and forth during IEP was trying to figure out, well, do we mean early college as in taking college courses earlier than um, actually graduating from high school, or is, are we talking specifically about a program that is an early college high school? Um, so this is something that was very useful, is that all these things are encompassing into cooperative, innovative high schools, which is a little bit longer to say, but definitely kind of the language that is going to be presented in Career and College Promise from here on out. Um, the second pathway is more of a college transfer pathway, so that's more so for students who will be going to, who would like to go to, on to community college or um, on to a four-year institution as well. And then the last one there is um, a technical career, so some kind of certification or um, pro a nursing program or something of that manner. Um, so goal one here, uh, what we talked about briefly from the logic model, um, is looking at cooperative innovative high schools or early colleges. Um, so ideally, um, we would the ideal um, implementation of this would be to provide students with the information of how to enroll in the fall of 2012. Because the application process for these schools um, is in the spring of 2013. Um, and then as part of the IEP here, here are the three schools that are listed as um, the schools that we would like to ideally work in. So um, Joseph Jobs, Clement Early College High, High School, as well as Gateway to College and Wake uh, North Carolina State STEM. Um, so eligibility requirements, um, this would include eighth grade students who will be entering ninth grade, um, and also the, um, the with the ability to be near one of those schools. Um, these schools in general have an emphasis on first generation college students. Um, and in the past, um, with uh, some of the early college high school initiatives throughout North Carolina, these have been primarily targeted at um, English language learners. Um, and then there are, might also be some other requirements set by um, local school boards um, and the partnering community college or um, university. Um, so some of the benefits of um, cooperative innovative high schools um, would be that students are able to complete their high school and some of them even their associate's degree um, in five years. Um, so they're able to do that as opposed to maybe going to high school and then continuing on to community college, which would be usually typically a six-year process. Um, and they're also along the way gaining um, support system as well as preparation for college. And then there are various types of cooperative innovative high schools throughout the state. Um, and we saw before some of those are, there is a variety that we'll be also looking at. Um, so the uh, second goal was being able to provide uh, the students within uh, the Triangle for Leader, Latino Student Success Project with the ability to um, enroll in college courses throughout their, their junior or senior year of high school. Um, so one of the questions we also had here was, um, well, if we're attempting to implement this in the fall, it's a little bit late to really try to be involved in that process for students to enroll in the college courses in the fall, simply because um, if the school will be start beginning soon, and um, we're not exactly sure what that would look like. Um, and then the next question would be, well, then are we choose, shooting to try to um, find students who will be enrolling um, in the spring um, for college courses, or would we already be finding students who are already enrolled and then finding students that way? So just one of those things about the chicken or the egg first. Um, so then ideally for college courses, uh, for students who would ideally like to enroll in the spring or in the fall of 2013, um, we would like to get information out to them in the spring or during the summer so that they would be able to enroll um, in the fall of 2013. Um, and then we're still a little bit unsure about, well, if they're able to even take summer courses as well and how that would work. Um, and so I'm going to pass the ball over to Leslie, who will be um, discussing more so um, some of the uh, Testing requirements, which we have here. So some of the, um, there are some prerequisites um, 
whenever students are attempting to enroll in college courses during their junior and senior years, and they also need to have good contact with their school counselor to really know that some of these options are available to them um, whenever they're doing high school selection. So um, I'm going to pass the ball to Leslie, and she will be discussing some more here at the bottom point um, about um, the different tests and pro proficiency requirements that are required um, for being able to even enroll in um, the college transfer pathway during a student's high school career. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, okay, so we, if we go to the next slide for college readiness assessment, there's um, seven different tests that um, can be combined in order to um, apply for the college readiness program. The first one, the plan test, um, that's administered for 10th graders. And um, after that, we have the PSA, PSAT test. Um, and that one is for sophomores and juniors only. And then the next three, they're all given at community colleges. And the last two are for um, 11th graders. And also, you can take it as a 10th grader. Um, if we go to the next slide, there's a little, there's some information like an overview of all the different tests, um, but we will also be sending out a file that has more in depth and links to get information regarding each test. Concern, um, maybe the dates, for example, would be one and a, and um, and their eligibility of when they can take it. Uh, but this is an overview of, uh, for example, if you look to uh, the SAT, it's offered seven times a year. And um, we have, and then within the file that we're going to send, it's going to go more into detail. For example, it will give you a website where you can go and take free SAT and SAT prep tests. And um, you can also register. It gives you the website to register for the um, test itself. And um, a lot of these tests, have fee waivers that you have to re report, you have to ask through your counselor at your school. Um, let's see. So the file itself that we're going to send also has for the ASAT test that's administered to all 11th graders, it will, it will have a breakdown of for Durham, Wake, and Johnson County of the schools that are providing the test and the test dates as well. Uh, let's see if there's, I believe that's it for an overview um, of these different tests, but, um, but the file will be more, will provide more information regarding um, sites that you can go to that will have more concrete and descriptive data about each of these individual tests. So um, I will pass it back to Felicia. Unless Felicia, did you, was there anything else that I left out that you can think of? I, I think that's um, good, Leslie. Okay, so then I'll just pass the ball back to you. Okay, thank you, Leslie. And um, I just wanted to reiterate that we really wanted to have a focus on these tests um, as well, just because with our with one of the goals of having students enrolled in college courses during their junior and senior year, um, we really wanted to emphasize that some of these tests they'll need to be proficient on um, various aspects of the test. So I'm going to go back one slide and show that. Um, Students will need to be able to be proficient in some of these placement tests, especially. So the asset, the compass, and um, the next one there, um, they all have different uh, proficiency test, testing um, scores. 
And so students would need to already be prepared for those things. And so we wanted to have a focus on those um, just so that we make sure that we're also considering that during the process. Um, so just saying that we have this goal of having a certain percentage of students being enrolled in a college course, well, what is the process of actually be having them enroll in that college course? It would be that they would need to have certain scores on one of those tests in order to even qualify um, for that particular um, component of um, the um, career and college um, uh, pathway there. Um, so some of the benefits of this as well, the college transfer program, is that students can obtain um, that credit as well during their junior or senior year to transfer successfully to a two or four year degree. And some of them can even complete those first two years and get those out of the way. Um, and we also see this as an affordable way for students, um, especially um, some of the students um, that we'll be working with might be undocumented and how do we kind of reduce that cost um, of them have, without the ability to um, apply for financial aid. Um, so then also associated with this in the college courses, um, the technical career pathway, which is that third prong of uh, career and college promise, is also for high school juniors and seniors. And um, basically, students just need to show an interest in one of the 16 different clusters, which I'll show you in the next page. Um, have this minimum 3.0 GPA or a principal recommendation um, and then maintain a, a good standing afterwards whenever they're actually in the process of taking those courses. And then um, again, there are some pre prerequisites that um, they'll have to take at the local, um, at the community college or whatever site there they will be ha uh, attaining these courses at. So here's just a variety of to kind of have a focus in. Um, so there's health sciences, hospitality. There's a, just a variety of things here that um, students who would like to um, pursue one of these could also um, choose to. Um, so some of the benefits of this is that they are, the students would be able to um, receive a credential from second certificate or diploma in a technical career. Um, but they also will be building skills for an entry level job. Which, might not, which means that they might not necessarily need to go on to um, obtain further um, higher education. Um, some of the drawbacks, though, for this is that um, just in general for a technical career pathway as well as for um, uh, the a college transfer path, uh, pathway is that um, undocumented students currently in North Carolina have to pay out-of-state tuition for these classes. And then um, the federal law prohibits states from granting professional licenses to undocumented students. So this technical career pathway, pathway would not be um, feasible for uh, undocumented students. Um, so that was something that we also wanted to highlight here as to which kind of one of these three pathways um, might be more beneficial to specific uh, students in the populations we are trying to reach. Um, and then this is another question that we had was, um, so goal five, we talked a little bit about success coaches. And uh, just to remind everyone that su the success coaches will be adult advocates at um, schools. And so one of the goals was to have them meet monthly. And so we were just um, wanted to emphasize, like, when, when will they be meeting and um, what is that going to look like, especially since school will be starting very shortly. Um, so this is just more things that we wanted to highlight um, for kind of more immediate, immediate um, thought processing. Um, and then as well as goal six, which would be the college student leaders component, which will find those leaders um, in each county, and then as well as those 10, uh, the first year students who the student leaders will be paired with. Um, and uh, just to kind of get that momentum going. And we, we thought that that would be great to emphasize here um, of how those things, those more immediate things will be addressed. And that's kind of, these are our concerns as well as um, more so uh, what we wanted to take out of that first portion of the logic model of uh, things that need to be done, I guess, by summer of 2013. Um, and so that is it for our presentation. I'm not sure if Leslie has anything else, um, but that is all from me. Uh, no, I don't have anything more to add, and that okay. was really well done. Thank you. Um, so I have a few questions for you um, okay. before we disappear. Um, 
and Rachel does as well. Rachel, why don't you ask yours first? Sure. Um, Felicia, in one of the last couple slides, you mentioned a couple of the drawbacks. And uh -huh. I'm wondering, just on a broader scope, uh, what some of the major barriers are that we're facing in trying to really um, propel this program forward. That's a great question. Um, do you mean some of the um, some of the drawbacks in propelling uh, the TLS project, or are you are are you um, asking about promoting the career and college promise? The latter. Sorry, I should have clarified. I'm speaking specifically to the career and college pro uh, promise program. Okay, um, I think that it's relatively new and um, something that when we were researching, um, that there there are there have been kind of some of these initiatives along the way of how do we get students to graduate with um, college course credit and all of these things. Um, and I think something that um, Leslie was really interested in too was how do we really make that connection with um, high school counselors and how do we get them to? I mean, obviously, high school counselors are are being stretched. Right, there's one for every 400 students or so in some schools. So how do they make that connection of, well, we want this student to be in a college course. Like, how do we make it more feasible for students to really be aware of those options? Mm -hmm. And I think something that we're really hoping for is that those success coaches would be great assets um, for our students so that they can really have that one-on-one -on -one attention that they need and they don't necessarily get from their college counselors. Um, so I think it is just awareness, and um, part of uh, the um, IEP is that, uh, or part of, the part of something that was in there was that um, North Carolina Society of Hispanic Professionals would be in charge of kind of raising awareness about this program and how, um, and so we're really excited to see what that's going to look like and how they're really going to uh, raise awareness to parents as well as the students who um, in this case, might be the ones who are really um, need to take the initiative to go up to their high school guidance counselor and say, I want to be in this particular pathway and I want to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if that answered entirely your question. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Let me ask you another question, Felicia. Um, it seems to say that even if students are in high school, if they're undocumented, they have to pay out of state tuition for the technical pathway or the college pathway? Is that true? Um, no, sorry. Um, so if they are taking a college course during high school, it's completely free for them. Right. Um, the only problem is that with that technical component is that um, they, I, I'm not exactly sure about um, if they can continue to take those classes in the technical pathway, but they still would not be able to obtain the actual license for some right. of those. Right, right, right. Um, but um, my understanding is that they, the college, if you were to enroll in a college course during your junior or senior year, it would still be free. Um, as is, even if you're in, if you're in, uh, if you're in, um, if you're in that early college high school program, which is usually a ninth through twelfth, or ninth through twelfth, and then one more year, um, or so five years of early college high school, that even that is free to the student. Okay. And in some cases, the students even obtain like a laptop or something. They're they're very much supported throughout that whole process during an early college high school. Okay. So then on this slide where it says the undocumented students pay out of state tuition. It's only after they leave high school, correct? That they would pay. Yes. Yes. So, um, yes. Yeah, sorry. So that was uh, should have been a different slide and trying to figure, <laughs> trying to put it all together there. Just wanted to make sure that it still was feasible for our undocumented students to um, have college credit and yes. have it in state. Okay. Great. Yes. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. I've, I'm so grateful to both of you for for this, um, and we'll send out the link to our partners. And then, Felicia, you'll be on the call Friday with them. I will be on it. And I, I also have a few questions that Leslie um, asked um, that I'll be presenting on Friday as well. And they're just more clarification questions again.